Hello, hello. This is Tammy Brunk, Earth Sky Woman, and I am here with you today with an oracle for the month of August 2024. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and dive in here and begin by kind of talking about some of the larger themes of the month or the larger happenings um, astrologically, and then I'm going to dive into the new moon and kind of begin there. So this month uh, features quite a few really big activations, but I want to um, open by saying that I'm speaking today on the 2nd of August, so we're right in the window of the cross border um, of Lamas or Lunasa, uh, which is a, it's a, it's a center point between the, um, the summer solstice and the fall equinox. So we're already in this really beautiful timing where the veils are thin. Um, the cross quarters can be seen as almost like the more witching times or the deeper hidden mysteries are held within those cross quarters. So you might think about, for example, um, Samhain or the time of All Hallows Eve. And that's the next one we're going to come to, the next cross quarter. But Lamas or Lunasa is also a very, very potent portal. And it also corresponds this time of year to the 8-8 eight, eight, um, Lion's Gate. A lot of people talk about this. And numbers magic is something that more and more is, I used to be pretty skeptical, but the more I tune into it, I do think there's something significant about these timings um when you see the you know many numbers all together like one 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 three 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 five 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 when you see those things you know it's like the angels are talking to us right i i do feel that it's a the universe is speaking to us angels the spirits our guides are trying to get our attention and um similarly uh days like the eight eight gate is very significant and in part because that number eight has so much potent significance it is um it can be seen as an infinity symbol um, also, it can be seen as carrying the codes of the uh, balanced masculine and feminine principles. Uh, eight also can um, is connected to the cycle of Venus. And I think you all know that Venus is a planet that I work with a, a, a tremendous amount. And so eight is a Venus number as well. And it, it's a sacred number on many dimensions. So so eight, eight is a significant date just purely on the numeric sense and the cicada sync so too. Um, but also it's significant, again, because it's very close to the exact cross border. So the August 8th is always going to be really close to when the sun, it, we, so I should back up, say Lamas or Lunasaw, those are two names for the, the cross border, the seasonal point between the summer solstice and the fall equinox. Um, and it's celebrated um, on the 1st of August. So it's good to have, what you'll find is that, you know, and all across Europe still, even to this day, they'll celebrate this um, this holiday, and um, usually around on the first. But because there needs to be collective agreement on the date, but really the the time when the sun, astronomically correct or astrologically exact cross border, is closer to the eighth of August. That's when the sun's almost exactly at that point. So again, that's this moment where it's kind of like the portals open, the veils are thinner. It's a time of really of mad of high magic. It's a time for ceremony. So 8-8 eight, eight is also important because of that. And then finally, here where I'm speaking to you from and where, you know, many of us um, are beaming to you from in the Northern Hemisphere it, it, around the 38 latitude line or close to that, around August 8th is is close to the time where you're going to start to see Sirius, the um, dog star, or Sirius, the, the brightest star in our sky, a very significant star to the ancient Egyptians, to the Dogon tribe in Africa, and across many other societies. Sirius, the star, begins to be visible in the morning sky around this latitude, um, around 8-8. So it, it's significant in every place across the globe, uh, because you're going to see Sirius around this time of year um, in many areas across the globe, depending on your latitude. But the first appearance of a very significant star or star cluster like Sirius or like the Pleiades, it can be seen as the beginning of the year, or it was to many of our ancestors. So um, so there are many reasons why this timing, August 8th, is very significant. So we already begin with what I'm saying. You already get the sense. All right, we're opening into this month of August with a lot of magic, a lot of beauty. Uh, it's very, there's a lot of sacred medicine that we can attune with and we can work with through ceremony, through just bringing our awareness more deeply into the breath, into the present moment. 
um, through meditation, however it is that you connect yourself to source, to the holy, um, in the many ways you do that, whatever your religion or spiritual, not religious affiliation is. Um, and it's just so sweet because there's so many beautiful birds where I am right now at my friend's house. Um, okay, so so that's kind of the larger sweep of how we're opening the month. And that's before we even talk about what's happening beyond the sun, because the cross border, of course, is a solar activation. That's when the sun is at a certain placement relative to the earth. So we haven't even started to talk about the moons or Venus or Mars or Mercury or um, the outer planets. But let me tell you, it's kind of like everything's coming online all at once this month. And that's, you might feel that in your body. So I also want to just say that we happen to be going back to the sun because the sun is primary. It's our energy source. It's incredibly important for us here on earth. The sun has been in his or her own, because we can see the moon as female or masculine. We can see the sun as female or masculine. Really, we can work with any of the planetary bodies that way. Uh, the sun, but I, I think of the sun as great mystery. I think of it more as masculine. Uh, the sun is, in my perception, alive and conscious, and the sun is going through its own evolutionary kind of arc or um, evolutionary um, activation right now. And one of the ways you can see this is that we're in the 11 year window right now of kind of solar maximum, where, as you probably may have heard, the auroras have been massive this year. A lot of people have been able to see or capture with their phones these incredible um, northern lights, even in areas where you normally wouldn't see those. And that's because that's the the visual component of something that's happening between the sun and the earth. That's very powerful, very potent, and that very much affects our electrical bodies. Um, and so the sun is waking up, the earth is waking up, we are waking up. And my perception more and more is that what's happening here boiled down into a simplistic kind of perception is that we... Humanity has been in a kind of a dark age. You know, we can look at what's happening on the world stage right now and for hundreds, thousands of years, and we are right at this critical precipice or portal where our species, in many prophecies, there are a million ways we can speak to this. I'm not going to go into that because it could take me an hour, but our species is is poised at this precipice where we have to evolve. We have to change. And more and more, what I want to say is that we are not in charge of this process. There are larger forces that we are caught in and we as humans are here to co-create with those larger forces, but we are not in charge. We human beings are not in charge. I just think that that's important at this moment to state. However, we have incredible po powers and capacities to, to um, work in harmony and alignment with these earth changes um, if we remember who we really are. just want to start with that. Okay, so... Um, so my sense is that our bodies, and this, there are many others who talk about this, but that our bodies as part of this evolving process are learning to receive more light. And we have a lot of support from this for this. A lot of these activations are that are coming through. It's about helping our physical bodies and our energy bodies to receive more of the light of spirit. And so there's a calibration that's happening and our bodies are going through this shift and change and it's not comfortable necessarily because as the body come, brings in more light, then it flushes out whatever is in our field, if that's ancestral trauma, if that's, you know, emotional um, kind of harm that we are holding in our energy bodies and our physical bodies, then that's getting flushed out. So our bodies are having to adjust to that. So it can be very uncomfortable. I just want to presence that before I break into the larger astrology, because my sense is that the bigger perception right now is more important than the smaller details. But so I just want to state, state all of what I'm saying right now. Um, but regardless what it looks like on the world stage with what's happening with war, I don't, I don't want to even say regardless. It's not regardless. It's like what's happening more and more. I see the earth body is the same as our human body. And as long as we're in an incarnate in human body, we our bodies are subject to the same kinds of guidelines as Mother Earth. And we are really part of Mother Earth. And so she's waking up. She's going through a healing clearing process because whatever whatever has happened on this earth historically in terms of the deep layers of warfare, violence, trauma, forgetfulness, 
that's held in the energy field of the body, much as our own energy field as a human being carries that trauma with our own personal experiences. So the living body of Gaia, of Mother Gaia, of Pachamama, of the various names you want to call Mother Earth, she's also going through a period of kind of healing or clearing all of that. Um, and so part of what's happening is that what's been buried is getting, is being emerged and it's being purified and cleared out. That's part of what's happening from my perception. I'm going to say something also that the, you know, to my friends out there who are very much more of a psychological or a therapeutic model, I understand that this is a take that may or may not feel resonant. It might feel too ancient or old or old fashioned, but, or binary, but I do feel like we are in a phase of spiritual warfare. I do feel like even though all is one, even though all is divine, all is, is source. I do feel like there is a kind of, um, certain you know, people say it different ways, anti-God consciousness or aspects of the creation that are playing their proper role, but that are in service to maintaining the status quo. Let me just say it that way. So dark energies in a sense that's not the positive or the, I shouldn't say positive, dark energies on the level of unconscious, you could say it that way, um, as contrasted to dark energies that are like the dark void of the mother, the womb energies, the sacred dark, right? So there's, I, mean, I shouldn't, I'm going on way longer than I intended with all of this, but basically I just want to say, speak these things because I feel like I have to do it very fast because I'm not online very much anymore um, in terms of sharing and there's a lot to catch up with. And I just think people need a better frame. You don't have to agree with anything I'm saying. I'm just going to share with you what I've been coming to over these last months. So my sense is, yes, that there is a kind of a sense of a spiritual battle that it's underway. Um, and I think that what is happening across the globe in terms of levels of violence and warfare, that what our job is as humans at this moment is actually to open our hearts to be able to actually allow that light in so that we are more here than we've ever been before. And, and it's a, it's a interesting kind of paradox because on one level, we're learning to connect more to our subtle senses of intuition and telepathy and connecting back into the living web of this creation, which is what I'm most excited about and seeing ourselves as, um, you know, more woven into the mycelial network of of life here on Mother Earth and beginning to understand the absolute sacredness and the beauty of that at a level that we forgot, right? That's what the age of forgetfulness is about, is we forgot that. Um, so where the heck was I going with that? Um, <laughs> so we're reconnecting. I don't even remember I was going with that. I am just going to, I need to get into the new moon and the full moon probably. <laughs> You can tell I'm about to go to Ireland and there's a lot to do to get ready. So I just, um, I've been trying to be grounded, but um, there's just a lot of energy moving through the circuits right now. And that's true for all of us. See it, right? It's just like, because we are light beings. Um, I think mostly what I was getting to is I, my senses were here to fully bring soul into body and, um, that most of us except great ascended masters have never experienced that and and we don't know how that feels exactly to be so at home in our bodies and so loving of our physical bodies and so tending to and aware of our energy bodies that we are able to allow that soul light to come in and to activate within our, ourselves and to know what it feels like to be fully incarnate. I think that's the game that we're up to right now. And so I think part of it is to open our hearts so we feel what's going on while at the same time not getting pulled into certain old programs that would keep us stuck in the loop of trauma and cycling old pain. Because I do think we're moving now towards, and this is a theme this month, we, um, you know, so many spiritual teachers that I'm deeply inspired by now um, would say that it's important for us to not go looking for the pain and the suffering. It's going to come up just for healing. Let it do what it does. Um, but but also to keep our eye kind of focused on what we actually personally and collectively want. 
what we want our world to look and feel like. And that's rigorous practice right now because it is very noisy out there. And I'm not saying elections aren't real. I'm not saying war isn't real. It's, you know, on one level, it's absolutely, it impacts all of us. Absolutely. Um, and we need to keep our imagination fresh. We need to be activating our imagination and that that imagination comes from us being rooted on earth, rooted in our bodies, um, and also cultivating practices of spiritual journeying and working with our dreams. And um, there's a practice of re-entering our dreams. We can actively learn to re-enter our dreams and cultivate shamanic dreaming practices. That's a big part of my training in active dreaming with Robert Moss. Um, to cultivate our imagination, our ability to create, to collabor collaborate collectively. These are all things that we are needing to, I, my sense is that we're here to focus on this month. And I think it's intended to be fun playful, creative. There's so much Gemini and so much Leo energy in the room this month and so much Uranus, like activating everything that it's kind of like this month is anything's possible. Miracles abound, fortify your faith, um, expect change and know that whatever that change is, that it's serving the greater good and serving your greater good. So those are just some of the larger themes. Okay. I didn't mean to take this long, but um, I really have wanted to connect heart to heart with you and it it has, um, it has felt like there are big blocks, um, causing it for, causing it to be difficult for me to really want to spend a lot of time in front of the computer, um, and able to find my voice and articulate what I want to articulate. So maybe I'm not alone there. Um, okay. So I'm going to go ahead then and dive right into the new moon. Um, I'm going to share what's going on with this new moon on August 4th, of course, when I look at a new moon, my sense is always that there is, excuse me, um, okay, here's the new moon. It's 6.13 a.m. Sunday morning, August 4th, excuse my hair, it's, I guess I'm lit up from the top, and there's a hummingbird above me, which is so sweet. Anyway, okay, Gemini, squirrel. <laughs> okay. It's a full moon, I'm sorry, a new moon in Leo, August 4th, Sunday, 6.13 a.m. Central Time. And um, so this is a really extraordinary full moon, or new moon. I don't know why I keep calling it a full moon. That's so weird. Um, okay, it's a really extraordinary new moon on the level that it is for many, many reasons. Um, one being and that it is happening near the cross quarter. So it's kind of lunar Lamas, you could say. Um, and and then it it's also very significant for all the reasons I mentioned. It's close to the 8-8 portal. It's close to the time Sirius. In some areas, Sirius is already visible in the morning sky, further to the southern, in the southern hemispheres, uh, or further south of the 38 latitude line. Um, so those are all significant um, the reasons why this is a significant chart, but also it's because we have um, we have we have Mercury stationing retrograde right near the time. So see, it says S stationing. So it's stationing retrograde. It's going to be retrograde Sunday night is when it's exact exactly when I'm flying to Ireland, which is very interesting. <laughs> Thank you, Mercury. I love you so much. Um, so Mercury is starting its journey right at this new moon in Leo. Wow. Okay. So let's talk about what is, what is Mercury retrograde about and how do we work with that most productively or most creatively or most beautifully? So the way I always have understood Mercury retrograde is that it, it is, first you have to understand we live in a culture in a moment in time where our modern civilization is kind of oriented around a more left brain way of operating. So you could say more, it's more, more left brain. It, it's, um, we could say masculine. I think that's simplifying it, but it's linear, rational, objective. It's, it's more about, you know, systems that are, um, it's, it's, oh my gosh, my words. I feel mercury right now, I think. Anyway. I think you understand what I'm saying. More of the left brain kind of consciousness and rational, pragmatic, linear. Um, so 
Mercury represents the collective mind or communication systems or even, um, you know, yeah, how do we think? How do we process information? How do we communicate? And what are our technologies around all that? So when Mercury stations retrograde, it's basically, it's like everything shifts, it's shifting. And so that every, that's why people will say everything's kind of scrambled during Mercury retrograde sometimes because our systems aren't wired. So it's my, it's more shifting as to the right brain, the right hemisphere of the brain, more into creativity, intuition, making these broad leaps. And so that's part of why literally it's not like Mercury is causing it, but Mercury appearing to move backwards in the sky shows us something's happening in the realm of mind and communication. It's a hologram, right? It's a, it's demonstrating something the as above, so below principle. So, um, so Mercury's and when it's a planet stations retrograde or direct in the sky, that is a moment where there's a still point. You can really feel that energy of that planet. And it's really potent. It's like this moment where it's because it's very close to the earth. And so right now or at the new moon, we're get, really getting a strong connection to Mercury, the planet. And there's deeper mysteries with Mercury. Mercury is Hermes. Mercury is the magician. Mercury is the alchemist. So, um, so, and it's preparing to move into a three week period where it's all about shifting to the more creative, colorful, intuitive, right brain awareness. Also, when a planet stations retrograde, you can understand that it's more of an inward time. So when I say inward, it doesn't mean we can't be creative and colorful and all those things, but there's also a reflective capacity. Something else to understand is that during this period, we're going to have Mercury with Venus and both of them, Venus right now, if you can see, is at 29 Leo. And that's a very important point in the sky as well, because um, it's very significant um, that basically the star the royal star regulus one of the four royal stars of ancient persia i.e modern day iran is iran very important right now yes um regulus the heart of the lion star this connection to archangel raphael um that star is very significant for our time because it moved from the sign of Leo, 29 Leo to zero Virgo, back at the end of the Mayan long count calendar, um, near the end of 2020, 2012, or yeah, near the end of 2012, is right around that time that um, that shifted. There was another cross check indicating that we are at the turning of an age, right? So Regulus kind of indicates or represents this shifting from my perspective of the experiment the human experiment of leo and what i want to describe it as is this in the in this you know regulus has been in the sign of leo for about over two thousand years it's this human experiment where we have experimented with human supremacy basically like pretending we're separate from the rest of the creation um and so seeing how far we can go with that saying i'm a kid like like a toddler right like it's an individuation process almost like I'm me and I don't need you. And um, I'm, you know, going to do it all by myself, even though, hello, like we can't do that. We are part of this creation when we're a physical body. Our spirit is something altogether different, but we're not in charge. <laughs> That's my sense. And so when, when regulus shifted from the very last degree of Leo I'm me, I'm myself, I'm God, I can do it by myself, into Virgo, zero Virgo. It was a kind of a quantum leap into a more service-oriented remembrance of our connection to Gaia. So from my perspective, it's healing the split. It's like, oh my gosh, I'm actually part of this beautiful larger creation. Mama Gaia, Sophianic, larger cosmic mother consciousness. Because uh, Virgo has to do with the feminine and with the sovereign feminine, by the way. Um, so the movement was in the sign of Virgo. And so there's a remembrance of the sacred feminine and the, the reverential dimension of being in this physical body and being on Gaia at this time. So this is a lot. I know fire hose. I'm sorry. I just have to get it all out. Um, so interestingly, when Venus and Mercury come together, that also has a strong correlation with the feminine divine, with the Shekinah in the early Hebraic traditions. Of course, 
it is makes sense that we're having these connections with ancient Iran, um, the ancient Hebrew traditions, where in the Solomon's Temple, when it was um, anointed or coronated, I, it, the point of it being fully complete and built, there was a beautiful star that was aligned with the temple, and that's connected to Mercury and Venus when they were conjunct, when they came together as one star. And the Shekinah, if you don't understand, is the Hebrew, early Hebrew understanding of the imminent divine, meaning when God is alive in spirit, in matter, which is the definition of the feminine spiritual pulse, is the feminine spiritual orientation is to bring spirit down into matter for incarnation. So spirit, that bringing spirit, bringing consciousness down and into this physical material realm. So Venus and Mercury are coming together at this time, very close to Regulus, which is just kind of mind blowing. So the heart of the lion, it's more than just that shift. It's also about being great hearted. It's about opening our personal and collective heart and remembering to orient from that place of unity, of love, of generosity. And not only that, it's awakening to our sovereignty and to our divinity. So when I say opening to our sovereignty and our divinity, again, it's it's like a good king or a good queen, like one of those sacred holy high kings or high or a grail king or queen, you could say from the, the Christian tradition. Ultimately, remember that we are of service. We are of highest service. And so we're bringing our spirits into these physical human bodies to become fully ensouled and to fully serve this beautiful sacred creation and, and to remember our divinity so we can co-create, so we can bring more beauty, so we can remember who we really are. So this timing is just absolutely stunning. Um, yeah, all these activations kind of blow my mind. Okay, so I've talked about the sun, talked about the new moon. Of course, the new moon can be observed for about three days on either side of the exact conjunction. And a new moon is a seed planting time. So you can already begin to feel, wow, like this is a time to plant seeds, Leo seeds. Um, just to bring it back to the basics, Leo is about radiant radical self-love. Leo, so first of all, we there's an interesting Gnostic teacher I was listening to, I was introduced to last year who basically said the only gift that we can actually give the earth, Mother Gaia, is to love ourselves. It's the only thing she can't give us is to fully love ourselves. And when I say love ourselves, what I mean by that is to really heal the heart at the core of patriarchy and in the three major religions whose great trauma we are seeing play out in the world today. To heal that is to heal that concept of original sin that that there is something wrong with us as humans that we are foundationally broken we're foundationally wrong and bad that's not true what's true is that we are sacred beings and we belong here and we came here to be gardeners of the earth and we forgot now listen to lila june johnson an indigenous wonderful scholar and she helps us remember that. I think it's one of the most important thing for modern people, especially modern people who are activists or who are change agents, who for so many years had come to maybe feel that we humans can do nothing but cause harm. That's that's an aberration. That's not true. We're actually here to bring more beauty, more aliveness, more beauty to the earth. That's our true function. But to get there, we have to learn how to remember to love ourselves as a species, as well as an individual's. Not as something above or separate, but as some uh, playing a special role. And Zyla June talks about us as being a keystone species. I think of those words as being profoundly healing for the human heart, who looks around and says, "We're we're just bad. We just do horrible things." Well, this is a particular moment we're living through, but it's not about our original nature. I don't care what the you know history is revealing a new story. Um, read. Um the book, um, The Dawn of Everything. It's an amazing retake on history. There's a million ways you can look at history differently now, but that's a good place to start. It's a big book, but it's very exciting. Um, okay, so what does it mean to love ourselves? 
it has to do again with seeing we are in our original essence. We're good. We're pure. We're, we're innocent. There's nothing wrong with us. We don't have to prove ourselves. We don't have to prostrate ourselves. We're in our original nature, just like any other being. We wouldn't say a tree is bad or a river is bad or we're not. We're just here to be who we are. So this new moon is a time to really deepen into that. Who am I? How can I deeply accept and love and cherish myself as part of the creation, as a sacred being? I think that's what this new moon's about. I'm just going to leave it there. I'm not very good at prescriptions right now. I think I'm right in the big picture more because it just feels so urgent for, for people to have a frame to place the larger kind of energetics that are underway. Okay, so that's the new moon. And... I want to make sure I'm not missing anything else about what's happening around that time. Okay. It is a very electrical dynamic month because Mar Mars is in Gemini. We, we have a very mercurial new moon setting the tone, you know, Mercury and Gemini are very resonant. It's a, a bot about the mind. Um, it's about this kind of crazy wisdom of Gemini, which is helping us to learn to pivot and to shape shift and to change as needed and not get so attached to and stuck with form. This month basically is just geared to basically turn us upside down, right side out. Like if you're not already scrambled, this month is going to scramble you appropriately because when we are so off balance and out of, and we're in our rigid kind of stuck place of Everything's supposed to be like this. My day ends like begins like this. I need this particular kind of coffee or whatever you do. It just it's gonna get turned upside down. But think of it as like a wild a roller coaster ride. You know, like you can either brace yourself or you can enjoy it. So, you know, get on the roller coaster ride. It's gonna be a lot of fun, and we get to have an adventure. This month is gonna be a grand adventure. So, um, yeah, in general, and I say that because we've got. I'm not going to break it down by too much by day or anything, but Mars is with Jupiter, August 14th. So that's just like really go time, like take action, move forward towards your goals and visions. It's Gemini. And so it, again, I can't be very prescriptive right now. I, again, it's just, it's play, <laughs> have fun, create. Keep remembering why you're here. Um, it can we are going to have waves of going into some really deep darkness, and so it. I feel what I've noticed, and this is why I think one of the phrases that came to me yesterday was "fortify your faith." Fortify your faith. Um, I feel like that came because what I've noticed is that there are these big waves where you can feel there's some really sticky, dark, intense energy that comes through, and when that comes through we go into fear we we go into like a, a sick feeling in our belly and everything feels dark again and that just happens it kind of passes through and then those are the moments where it's really important to remember that in one second i can reconnect to source um i can reconnect to the light inside of me and i can reconnect to what i call now mother father god or creator or most high or I can say sometimes mother, mother goddess. I, lately, it's felt important to me to honor the masculine feminine in the creator. That's just me. For you, it might be that you have been so over here with the masculine. You need to just focus on the goddess. So I think whatever resonates is wonderful. If you're more, it's the universe. doesn't matter. But connect to source. Connect to sources of love. You might, it might serve you to say, I connect to my higher wisdom, the greater part of me that can see this from a higher view. Sometimes it helps me to say, I connect right now with my, the future self who is really thriving and living my soul, soul in body beautifully. I'm fully alive. I'm fully on purpose. I'm in my mission. I'm like loving life. I'm shining my light fully. That's my future self. I'm connecting to that part of me and bringing that part online right now. Because let me tell you, Time is going to be wonky. We are really opening into our multidimensional selves this month. And so it it's really, you don't have control. We're not in control here. We're not. 
It's our job to keep connecting to the light. Come back to the light, come back to the light, come back to the light. And I do think it is about coming back to the light. And I mean, coming back to love, coming back to our consciousness, coming back to self-trust, coming back to innocence. Um, those feel like the most important things. All right. So the other thing is um, we have, um, we have, I'm going to stop sharing. Venus is going to be, well, you'll see Venus is going to be with the moon. Moon's going to catch up with Venus August 10th. So you may be able to see Venus in the evening sky. She's been really difficult to see. I think it has to do with her angle every, every year it's different, but um, seeing her in the evening sky is challenging um, for me, at least if those of you have seen her already wonderful, I haven't, I'm hoping to see her in Ireland, but if you can see her in the evening sky after sunset, you'll see her with the crescent moon um, on the, um, about August 10th. And that's the activation of the root chakra gate. So that's the goddess Inanna. Now we're talking about ancient Iraq. Um, the, the goddess of ancient Sumeria was Inanna and she was, a, she, Venus and Inanna were the same. So in Inanna's journey to the underworld, which correlates to the Venus cycle, um, the current Leo Venus cycle we're in started August 19th of last year. So that's when the goddess Inanna appeared in the morning sky in all of her glory. And then from August 19th until about April 27th, she was a morning star and she was like the goddess going through the moon gates, like the goddess releasing in each of the chakra gates. And then she was in the underworld on the other side of the sun from April 27th until technically the middle of july but really we haven't many of us haven't seen her and won't see her probably for in the next few days so now we're in the zone of time this month where the the love goddess the evening star goddess she who has been initiated um is arising she's she is going to become more and more visible in the evening sky after sunset and i think i've been really this morning i i was reminded that sekhmet the goddess Sekhmet, she's very closely connected to the Leo mysteries. She's a lion-headed goddess of Egypt. She's very important to call on right now as a protector and as a guardian in her higher light. And we can call on her and we can call on Hathor because in the stories of Sekhmet, she is a devouring goddess, um, a war goddess, as Morning Star, Evenus can, Evening Star, can, Morning Star Venus can be. So she has been a war goddess present last year, and you saw a lot of violence last year in her morning star phase. And But when she rises as evening star, and she's gone through this whole deeply compassion, she's gone through a whole process of death and rebirth. When she arises in some of the stories, she is the healer Sekhmet, or in other stories, she becomes Hathor. But in either case, she's a healer, and her heart is cleansed and purified, and she is a force of powerful love and compassion and healing so when you see her in the evening sky understand this is one of the greatest protectors and guardians of humanity who is in her phase now where she's so rooted and connected in her love presence that she still can activate that fierce warrior if needed but that she's a warrior of love and she's been gentled and softened into compassion and empathy so we can call on that version of the goddess Sekhmet, Hathor, in this month of August, a beautiful thing, in this month of the lion's gate. You know, the lion medicine is big, so work literally with lion in her feminine or masculine form. Okay. I feel like it's just, I've been trying to get breaths, right? But there's just so much energy moving through the body. And I am an air moon sign. I have moon and gemini and as much as i want to be like an earthy moon person i just am not so you just have to acknowledge that sometimes you know working on it um okay okay so full moon in aquarius so that's august 19th it's it's um also very powerful the new moon and the full moon this month are just off the charts this one is um, square Uranus. I'm sorry, sorry. Yes, square Uranus, exact, almost exact. I mean, within three seconds. That That's off the chart. So again, expect change. Uranus has to do with sudden, rapid change. 
accelerated awakening. It's like we are, the light is pouring in. We are waking up fast and that can be very uncomfortable. Expect the unexpected. That's just, you know, we, again, I just keep on, got to surrender to whatever's going on and keep coming back to the light. There's just no question. What else to say about the full moon? Um, it's Aquarius. It's a vision quest moon. Um, it's a good time to begin to vision into the next, you know, period of the, the last part of the year to really, again, be reminded that we are here to cultivate a new vision for a new time and to keep, keep focusing our attention, being very rigorous about what we want personally and collectively, and be sure that that's woven into the human communities and the earth ecosystems to which you are rooted or that you love. And make sure our visions are connected to the future ancestors and the kind of reality that most, most serves them. And know that this month we are, we are in a quantum field and it's very malleable. So what we do every moment with our thoughts with our presence, with our focus of attention. Keep coming back to the light. Fortify your faith. Return to the body and the breath. That, I should say, the final thing, because I think I need to complete here. The final thing is, do everything you can to keep taking care of your physical body in the most basic ways. Even though it's going to feel pretty wild, um, your schedule might get scrambled, whatever, whatever. Um just drink good water um try to get enough sleep that might be challenging but try to get enough sleep eat nourishing foods lots of good nourishing plants and everybody's waking up in different ways right now some people it's meat some people it's not meat i've got no judgment listen to your body what it needs give it what it needs some people are doing water fast some people are Listen to what your body wants. It's very individual. We're all going through different phases of all of this. Um, but just take good care of your body and regularly ground. And the way I sometimes ground is, again, just really feeling the, the it's like the gravity. I just think gravity, I think, okay, thank you, gravity. Gravity, you're a gift. Thank you. And I just like bring my awareness to the bones in my body. I bring my awareness to the place where I'm seated on this chair or where my feet are on the ground. And I just literally, I just feel of myself, my energy just drop. It's like I'm getting pulled into the earth. Literally. I feel that sensation of gravity and I let myself feel that downward pull. That's the feminine. You know, it's about that pull of soul down and into the body and into the earth. And it's a good feeling because when we feel that downward pull, we just soften and we relax and we let ourselves be held by the mother. We let every muscle, every part of our fascia just open and soften to receive the light of the masculine and we can do that at any time and so we remember to breathe <sighs> remember to feel that sensation of being pulled down and also frequently to, to sense okay is my consciousness like out in these little tendrils like all out there and if so it's almost like just Pull your higher self in, pull your mind back into the body, down and in regularly. Like we need to be fully in our bodies, be fully rooted in your body. Okay. I'm just going to leave it there because that's a lot and sending you all that, all this love. And I hope that this has been specific enough and also general enough, a bit of an experiment, but I hope you have a beautiful month and please let me know in the comments. If this is helpful, please share. Um, please give me feedback. Please like um, if you like it. And, you know, that'll help me to know that this is useful and that people are listening and um, that I can continue. And, and let me know what you want more of and what less of. Okay. And have a beautiful month.